Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be installing this ductless air 24,000 BTU unit in my wood shop. This unit I picked up at Home Depot. It was uh, six, normally priced $1,600 on sale for $1,300. Alright, let's get to it. everybody so we're gonna be mounting our mounting bracket I had planned on putting it somewhere else um, but the ceiling in my other room is a little bit lower than this one so I couldn't get the kind of clearances that I wanted to get and still be able to get my um, line set and drain line where I wanted so I'm just going to mount this up here and take the um, line set and the drain hose out the side through the um, this wall of the building so this is like 27 and a half the overall unit is 42 so I made a little line over here um, to where the left edge of this bracket can go um, this line across here is a top plate so I'm gonna put this right here um, the line the holes up with the top plate and that'll give me my 12 inch clearance on top so you want it kind of high um, but they suggest 12 inches of clearance because the hot air rises and it can pull it pull it in through the top all right so we'll get our first screw in and then we'll get it leveled up I'm going to start just a little bit below the top plate here and put a screw in here to the left. And actually, let me slide this over a little bit. To about where my mark is. Now we'll get our screw in over here on the right side. Oh, and that is right where a kneel is. So let me move over just a little bit. All right, there's one. Let's get the level on there and get it moved a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right. Get us another screw in the left side here. All right make sure we're not too far off perfect now I'll just drive in a couple more screws just to solidify it but those two that I put in there they should actually hold most of the weight so we'll get one or two more in here just for good measure basically to get these bottom wings to stay flat yeah a little stretched out here trying to trying to bend over all this stuff but We'll get one more in there in the middle, approximately the middle. All 
All right, good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped to drill the hole through the wall for the line set to exit. I've got a long bit. Um, once I take some measurements here to make sure I got a little bit of slope to the lines, that way I don't ha have to worry about the water draining um, and getting backed up once it gets outside the building. All right, so I want to drill the pilot hole through the wall uh, for the line set. Now, I already made a mark uh, a couple inches down, two inches to be exact, from where the line's going to exit the head end unit, the inside unit. And then I've got this very long drill bit. Um, my walls are two by six walls, fully insulated, um, with an inch and a half of foam in it as well. So uh, I got a few things I'm going to have to go through to get this outside. But when I do it, uh, I'm going to put the drill at a slight angle. Um, so that way when it comes out the other side of the wall, um, it's a little bit downhill for that water drainage. All right, let me, let's get to it. Now I had to come in a little bit uh, from this corner because I double studded it um, next to the post so that I could have a nailer for my uh, walls. So I have to come in a little bit, so it's gonna be a little bit funky in this corner, but nobody's really gonna see it, and it's just my workshop, so, you know, big deal. All right, I had to move it over a little bit more. Uh, I kinda of caught the edge of my two by four here when I made my initial mark, but I think we're good now, so let me Put in the hole saw. We'll do a two and a half inch hole saw, um, which is approximately, which should be a good fit for the um, through wall pipe that's with the kit, the line set sleeve. Make sure I clear my hole. Trying to maintain that angle as well. Okay, perfect. And I'm right on the edge of that stud, so that worked out really well. So, right on the edge of that stud that I put. Um, when I eyeballed the left to right, I was a little bit on my stud, so that looks pretty dang good. So, we'll go outside and do the other side here shortly. All right, so here is my hole uh, on the other side of the building that I'm going to be drilling out. Um, it, it's not the most ideal. I got this power outlet below me, but it's fine. I can just ro move it around it a little bit once it gets out the wall. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. <laughs> so kind of the opposite of what we did earlier. Um, since we want the slope to go downhill, I'm going to tilt the drill slightly this way. Um, it shouldn't really matter. There's, this is kind of the very top of my um, beam or the board that goes around the building. So I'll probably clip it a little bit. Actually, I'm above my beam, so that's pretty. That worked out pretty good. Uh, I got just my foam for my inch and a half foam insulation in there, and I should be able to if I can get to it without a ladder. So hopefully, I can get this in here. Might have to.
Yeah, it seems pretty good. So there's the sleeve that goes in there. And we'll put a little bit of silicone on the inside of this thing if my silicone's not all dried up. I'll have to put quite a bit because the way this is uh, cupped a little bit, the side walls, but. But I want to make sure that rain doesn't get in there. And I want it to stick to the wall. So that should be good. Twist it a little bit. I'll probably come back around and later and go around the outside edge as well. Just to make sure that it's good, but we'll let that set up a little bit and come back to it a little later. Hey everybody, we're back. Uh, unfortunately, it's day two. Uh, I had a little bit of a setback running my electrical took a little bit longer than I expected and also I was waiting on a few parts to come in from Amazon uh, to finish the job so I was kind of stale uh, yesterday so one of the things I was waiting on was these brackets to mount the unit to um, they're pretty inexpensive and I'll link them down in the description but they're they seem fairly good um, for the price they basically just unfold and then fold back. And then you line up this hole. And then it came with a couple different things. It came with these, uh, these little rubber mounts, uh, but the unit came with kind of nicer ones. So I'll probably use the ones with the unit. Um, some zinc screws to mount the unit to the bracket too. And then these anchor bolts, uh, which we'll use to fasten the bracket to the wall. Now you need a, uh, this is an M8 anchor. So you need a 14 millimeter uh, bit. I don't have a 14 millimeter bit. The largest that I have um, is a half inch. Um, have bigger than that but it won't work for this purpose but the biggest normal bit I have is half inch which is about 13 millimeters so we'll just have to try to make it work I think it'll be close enough and I'm gonna be putting it into wood so it'll be probably be fine um, but yeah you just take these guys you got a stainless steel bolt and a washer nut and a washer Get them babies on there. Just tighten them up. Now these are our metric, so. That's basically it. That one's ready to go. I'll do the other one here in a minute uh, off camera. And the other two things I was waiting on was this nylon blue, nylon blue, and I'll put a, a link down for Amazon in description for it as well. And this will basically, we'll use it later, but it'll go in between your 
where you hook your two line sets together and you just put a little bit on the flare. And then the last thing I was waiting on was this extension hose. Uh, this ductless air unit only comes with a six foot hose. So I need a little bit more than that. So I got this also on Amazon. And again, I'll link it down below in the description. And actually the quality of this one seems a little bit better than what came with the unit. But uh, I checked it last night when it came in and it'll hook fine to the six foot uh, extension hose that was with the unit, but it doesn't seem to mate very well with the hose that's directly attached to the unit. So I'll have to use that six foot one that came with it and this one. All right, so one last thing I did last night is just for aesthetics. Um, I'll show you guys over here. Is I printed this uh, beauty ring for the hole going through the wall, and we'll take this and make our inside hole look nice. For my purposes, uh, the wall um, bushing or whatever it's called was a little bit shorter than the thickness of my wall um, so it didn't quite extend into the building so i wanted to use this uh, make one of these so that the line set doesn't rub on the wood hole so we'll just get that put in real quick and then we'll get outside and start mounting the unit so Just like so. I got a couple screws down here. We'll screw it into the plywood wall. And then I won't have to work, like I said, won't have to worry about it. Won't have to worry about it rubbing on the line set. All right, there we go. So now we have a nice clean hole to work with whenever we run the lines. All right, so let's, we'll go outside and we'll start, actually we'll take a measurement real quick of the, where the wall brackets need to go. And then we'll go outside and get that working. All right, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure in between the centers of the mounting holes of the unit. So we're looking at approximately 26 and a half inches. So that's how far our brackets need to be apart center to center. So we'll get all this stuff outside and start working on the mountain brackets. All right, so uh, here's my electrical out here in the garage. Don't mind the ugly silicone job. Um, that particular caulk that I used, it's, it's very sticky. It's hard to work with. So it works really good, but it's hard to make it look pretty because um, it sticks to everything. All right, so I've got uh, these pressure two pre uh, two by fours. And I'm, I already pre-drilled a pilot hole and I'm gonna anchor these to the wall because um, there is a, a run that goes across the middle here and then there's one down at the bottom. And if I was just to put the mounts on the wall, I would be lucky to get one screw into it. So I'm gonna use these and mark them out, the 26 and a half on center and get them fastened uh, to the wall here and then we'll use our uh, our anchors to anchor them in. So first, I'm going to get my marks for 26 and a half. And I already know that this is the one that I want to get to. That way the whip can reach the unit. So we're going to go pretty much just center right there.
And we got a mark down here. All right. So that's basically where I want to go with those. And then I'll, I'm using these construction screws to mount them to the wall. They're about three and a half inches, something like that. And then I'll drill a, a pilot hole just to make it through the metal and then we'll get them attached. We'll start with our first one here. <clears throat> And I just want to make sure that I can hit this two by six that goes through here, this band board. So we'll get our top one in. All right. Of course, I need to change my bit. <clears throat> get her straightened up a little bit <clears throat> get this bottom hole dr drilled pretty good on that it's pretty sturdy let's go over to this other spot <clears throat> kind of the same process Trying to not let the board move while I do this so the hole keeps lining up. All right, straighten her up a little bit. Perfect. All right, nice and solid. All right, so that's those, and then we'll get our mark our height over here for these mounts see how high we want to make them so here's our mount and this is how they mount to the wall so I'm gonna try to probably put one at the top and one at the bottom of those screws that came with it these big guys right here eight mil eight millimeter I'm just gonna eyeball it right now on this first one to get my height. I don't want it too terribly high, but I want it pretty far off the ground, so. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my top one. In the bottom one. I'm 
just kind of making sure they're straight. Look pretty good. Hopefully they're not too far off. <clears throat> guy out. Alright, that went pretty good. Let's see how well it fits with this bit. Yeah, it's a little bit tight, so I'm going to wobble it out a little bit. Alright, that should be good. Let me get this bottom one. Seems pretty good. We'll pick up a little hammer to tap those guys in here in a second. All right, back. I'm gonna try to tap these guys in real quick. I'm take the screw out so I don't mess up the threads and make it spread. We'll see how well that works. There we go. A little on the tight side. But it went in. <clears throat> Try to... Get that one a little bit, a little more clearance there. That seems a little better. Perfect. Now let's get these guys in there. kind of nice about this I think if we just get them fairly close we can adjust the level a little bit there's a little bit of play in the screw hole so we can move it up or down just a hair tighten that guy up a little bit later we'll try to get our our centers here lined up
I'm just trying to make a mark off of our drip. It's not the most scientific method here. I might go out and grab me a level real quick. Put across the two. Make sure it's level. going to try to get my top mark for this bracket all right that's it now didn't do the best job laying these guys out but I think it'll be fine all right got our two marks Been nicer if I did a better job getting them centered, but I think it's okay. Bolton. There's the first one. There's the second one. Get a bracket on here. Now this wood that I'm using, this was just a piece of two by six that I had left over and I just split it down the middle so I could have enough to get these mounted on here. Kind of just trying to maintain my top line here so my level's good the 
side to side. Sides fairly good. Bring it up just there. Get them all the way tight now. All right, seems pretty good. Let's see how, if we can actually make our marks. Yeah, looks pretty good. We'll see how it does once we get the unit out here and get it mounted on there. That We'll do that next. All right, so we got the unit out here. And there's two sides of this unit. This side over here where you can see the fan and has the kind of nicer grill. That's the side that needs to be facing away from the building. And then if you come around here... This is the inside of the unit where you can see the fins. That's the side that will be going next to the building. And you're trying to maintain approximately 12 inches of space between the inside of your building and this side of the uh, unit. And we're gonna put the camera down for a minute and get this thing set up here because it's pretty heavy. It's definitely a two-person job unless you're a world strong man and I am not so we'll be right back once we get this unit set up on here oh one one quick thing my wife was uh, asking me about these brackets and if one is a left and one is a right um, I would say it for me it doesn't really matter um, they serve the same purpose whether this flat side is in or out it probably is meant that this side faces out, but I think either way doesn't really matter. It's going to work just fine. All right, so we got the unit up on the rails. I already fastened one side just to play it on the safe side, but basically put it up here. We got these rubber pads that came with the unit in between them and the mounts and you get a screw with a washer to go through the top and then a washer and a bolt through the bottom all right and then we'll do the same for the back side we'll do that real quick kind of hard to see up against the wall hard to see just doing it matter of fact trying to film this super tight and actually it's kind of a benefit for putting these mounts the opposite way is because that that plate is not in my way on this outside edge to try to get the, the nut on now I'm gonna adjust this out as far as I can go before I tighten it down because it's pretty tight here on this mount that that I got so I want to try to give it 
as much space as we can. And that's about it. And we'll go back and tighten those all back down real quick. And then we'll start working on the getting the line set out here. So we're getting this unit ready to go. I want to show you guys a few things here. Uh, I need to click connect the wire, um, the control wire for this unit before I try to hang it on the ground and get the piping ready. So this cover right here, it's kind of a little scary to take off. Um, you feel like you're going to break it when you do it, but you just put your screwdriver in here and then you pop it loose. Now I've already taken it off, um, but it's a little bit um, of a challenge. And you know, sometimes working with these plastic parts, you think you're going to break them, but so far so good. Uh, I was able to pop it open and get it out of there. And also, um, I removed this little guy, which is this uh, strain relief. Hopefully you can see it there. Kind of hard black on black. Uh, it has three screws on the top. You can see the one that's still remaining. Now it's down in this hole there at the bottom. And I'm going to run my cable up uh, through the back. And then bring it out the top, strip it down, and wire it up. Um, now the back has a strain relief on it. I'll tilt this up so you can see it. All right, so there's a metal bracket there that the wire will go through. And then come through the top, go through here, and we'll put the strain relief back on once we get everything wired up. So let's get that wire in there and I'll come right back to you. All right, everybody. So, so we got the wire ran through the metal hole in the back and I got the outside covering uh, pulled back a few inches. And I was just going to show you how I put these, um, terminals on here now in the manual it says use a u-terminal but the smallest one i have will not fit in the holes um, so i have these uh, that i use on some other electronics projects and i think they're called ferrules and i got three of them on there i haven't crimped them just yet but i was wanting to show you guys these and how to do it um, so basically you trim back about a half inch of insulation on the copper and then set the camera down here Then you just put your little end on there. I kind of spin it when I put it to it cover to the copper kind of just about ready to stick out the end. All right. And then I've got these handy crimpers check the description for a link to those if you're interested in them and you just put this guy in the middle on the cut on the silver part and then you crimp it down and let it go and so now it's got a nice crimp so we'll do that on all of them here and this is a little bit better than just straight copper coming through All right. Now, the next part that's kind of interesting, now that we got those out of the way, is the manual on how to wire these guys up. So it says, wire them in the order on here. But it only has numbers one, two, three, and then there's a ground over here. So we know which one the green goes to. But it doesn't say, hey, the f number one needs to be red or black or white or whatever the case may be. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go look at the unit outside and see how it's wired so I can tell which order to go in. 
and walk out here to the outside unit. All right, here's the outside unit. Got the panel taken off. There's just a couple screws that hold it. But you can see red is number one, black is number two, and they have a yellow for number three. So we'll just assume that's gonna be white. And then we got the ground at the end. Um, so we'll go hook those guys up like, like that. So one is red. Two is black, and then white. So red, black, white. Probably not gonna be able to do this on camera, but we'll see what we can do here. So number one is gonna be red. We'll get that red one down in the hole. There we go, it's in there. And then I'll just tighten that guy up with a screwdriver. Make sure it's nice and snug. It is. All right, it's nice and snug. Do a little pull test. Get the red one in there. Now I put it in there until these little red things are pretty much all the way in. And then I'll tighten those down here in a second. All right. So we got it in there pretty good. Get a good tightening down. See that one's trying to back out on me a little bit. Let's give those guys all, yeah, see the white one came out. The black one's good. I'm gonna redo that white one. Put this camera down so I can hold it while I do it. All right, gotta pull this back to where the black is the part that's getting cramped, clumped down on. Started. Get the other one started over here. bigger screwdriver here so I can get a little more torque screw there's three of them in there make sure they're all nice and snug
Yeah, it's not the best. Might have needed to go to this other hole. See if I can get a little bit tighter. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. So we'll do take two and we'll move this over to the next hole. There's several holes in this strain relief, different sizes, so. Thought I chose the right size, but obviously I didn't. This way to see if I can do this well. There we go. So we'll try the far hole. It's a little bit smaller. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't have to pinch them. It just needs to be, you know, nice and tight where it doesn't move, so. Yep. Snugging them up. All right, seems pretty good. Yeah, now that's not moving. All right, perfect. All right, so now that that's wired up, like I said, we'll get this cover back on here. All right, so we'll get this. Let's well, get in there and we'll get this cover back on and then we'll get to the back side. So just, just kind of keep an eye on your wires here. It's kind of a challenge to get this thing in, in and out guess probably the preferred method is to get this right side down in there a little bit and then work your clamps here in let me move this camera back here so So I can use both hands. There we go. said a little bit of a challenge to get that guy, bad guy back in there but got it all right let's pop open this back side and see what's up this cover too it just kind of clamps down So, 
here's the knockout because I'm coming out the side. You might not come out the side, but I need to come out the side based on the way I positioned everything. And it had this cover on here. It goes about like so. And then there's a little, sorry, I probably didn't see that. It goes like so, and then there's a little place where you put your this little notch, your screwdriver to pop it off. All right, and then as you can see, we got our wire going through that hole. And then I'll probably put a wire tie on it once I'm done here, just to give a little extra relief. But we need to get these knockouts out. So let's see if we can do that. I'll try it with my side cuts. <clears throat> I'm going to take out the big one just to give it the most room possible. This is working. There we go. Got the first one done. It's kind of working it a little bit. Just about all the way through it here. Probably use my tin snips a little easier. Go ahead and grab those real quick. Actually, let me see this knife. If it'll do anything. Oh yeah, knife works great. Well, it works great on an already cut piece. <clears throat> it's getting through there though. There we go. We'll just try to fold those down. Kind of work it back and forth. Cable's kind of getting in my way a little bit here. All right. There we go. It's kind of peeled it off. I'm going to take my knife and take my knife and clean this up a little bit. Clean up any sharp edges here. All right, that should be good. Now let's see if we can get our lines bent out the side there. Now these line sets, they have, if you can see it, uh, like a spring around them. It helps to bend it so you don't kink it because you don't want to close it. 
get it kinked in the middle. It seems pretty good. I think it'll be fine. Let's, we'll get a little tape. Hopefully you can, like I say, see this stuff. I might actually want to pull them up just a little bit so I can get some tape under there. I'm going to tape them part of the way, working from the unit, going to the side. So this tape is kind of interesting. Doesn't really stick to itself to anything. So I don't know how well it's going to do once I get beyond the unit. I'm just kind of pulling it tight as I go. I'm about doing a half overlap from roll to roll. And I'm keeping the, the drain tube on the bottom. Doing this down here is a little bit easier than standing up on the ladder doing it. All right. That's about as far as I'm going to go for now. <clears throat> I'll grab a piece of tape, regular tape, to tape that off because you can see as soon as I released it, it released the pressure. The very end has sticky stuff on it, but the rest of it doesn't. So I'm going to go back a little ways to... Kind of tighten it up a little bit. All right, and I got some Gorilla Tape here. I'm just going to tape around it here to make it hold all together until we get the rest of it on there. Well, after goofing around with it for a while, yeah, I got it on there. We'll see how well it holds up. But we'll probably 
I'll probably set this up on the wall next and go ahead and actually I'll show you guys something first I'm gonna pull these off these line set knobs off so I think this small one is the high pressure and when you release it should hear some gas hopefully you can hear it I can hear it so it's got a little nitrogen in there got a little nitrogen in there for the purging of that let me take this one off Need some pliers for that guy, it's pretty tight. Yeah, so I just cracked it loose with some pliers, taking this cap off as well. Well, I got it down here. All right, there we go. All right, let's try to set up for... We'll set up my stuff up for putting that guy up on the wall, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, so I'm going to set this guy up on the wall. Luckily, I had this little window AC that the last guy that lived here left me, which is going to go by the wayside eventually. Uh, so I'm going to set this up here and then we'll look into getting a line set through the wall and attached. So I just, I'm going to lift it up here and it lifts, it hooks on these clamps and then it clips down. I don't have a need for it to um, be off against the wall, but if you were going through the wall, it shows in the manual, put a little block behind here so that you can work back there. But I don't need to, I'm good to go. So let me get this thing on here and we'll get to the next step. All right, seems like it's on there. Maybe. Can't really tell. The line set's kind of hitting my dust collector pipes over here. So let me move those a little bit. There we go. Just clamp it down. All right, good to go. lost my camera lady so trying to finish this up all right so yeah so I got my desk collection pipe that's going to go back in here I took it out of the way so we could work here but these are going to kind of line up like that and I think it'll be fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my line set and my drain pipe and poke them through the wall here and then kind of stack them where they need to go and then pull them back out and wrap them uh, all the way up into the connector start so that way at least they're wrapped all the way through the wall so let me get through that and do that we'll straighten out those lines first So basically all I'm looking to do is kind of roll these out and straighten them a little bit. They're pretty stiff. 
kind of a little bit at a time. <clears throat> I don't care if they're a little bit arced on the beginning here, but I just want them straight enough to go kind of roll them out and straighten them as you go Alright, so that's pretty much it. Roll them out. You put your foot down on them, but don't, don't put a lot of weight. Just enough to hold it down. You don't want to smash the lines. And then we'll get these outside. Alright, after a short break, uh, we had a little thing to do. And a outfit change we're back um, I got the connections made it was kind of hard to line everything up um, just because it's a tight workspace but they're done and I'll come back once we pressure test it and verify uh, and tape it back up and when I do that I'm gonna fix this hose because um, we don't want this divot in the hose we want it to be up like so so i'll tape it up to where um, water doesn't get stuck down there like that now when i used uh when i put the two uh clamps together i used a little bit of this nylog blue um, it goes right on the end of the pipe and then you put your pipes together and this helps seal in case there's a little bit of discrepancy between the flanges so I'll show you how to use it once we do the ones outside on the compressor when we have a little, little more room to work with than this little tight corner. So we're going to go outside and do a little work uh, getting the rest of these lines laid out. Alright, so we're back out here outside and I'm going to try to form these lines to get them back over here to the unit. Uh, try to get a good layout and determine whether I'm going to cut some off. I probably am because they look super long. But we'll see after we're done. Um, so, I'm trying to make sure that I keep my pipe um, pointing straight down the drain hose. And I'll hook a little more drain hose to it once we get it worked. But I want to avoid this box and kind of come over here to the side a little bit. So, I want to kind of get a little bend going on them. <clears throat> But I want to make sure that I keep my uh, keep my pipe, my drain hot pipe where I want it. So try not to kink it up there. <clears throat> So I'm just kind of giving it a little pressure every so often to kind of get the general shape that I'm looking for. And actually this drain pipe is kind of about the right length of where I want it. It's not much longer than I want it. All right. So from here, get it 
kind of going this direction now. I'm going to wrap these back up whenever, whenever I get them where I need them at. See how it's going to lay out. I'm going to run these behind the unit. All right, that looks pretty good for the most part. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I got a good 10 feet left over, so definitely going to have to cut some off here and reflare the ends. The flaring kit I had uh, doesn't have the 7H size, which this unit needs. Mine a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to have to run go grab a different flaring kit. I borrowed it from my friend. It's not a full set. So I have to grab one so we can finish the lines. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get the electrical hooked up. Um, so I got my... I ran a 20 amp circuit for this. Uh, it states in the manual that a 25 amp is the maximum breaker, um, but the maximum pull is 18. Uh, so 20 amp should be good. Uh, I already had a 20 amp that was running halfway down my building that I was using on one of my resistive heaters that this is gonna replace. So I borrowed from that and made it a little bit easier to run than a full run. Um, so, I got this liquid tight whip, mounted it in the right side of this cover, and we have the right side is where your main voltage or main power supply comes in. So two, 220, you got a red or black and our ground. So I'm just gonna put our little spade connectors on here, our, our little U connectors. And then we'll get this side wired up. And also in there, inside there, there's a uh, there's a strain relief right here. I might use it. I don't really need it due to the fact that I have the um, liquid tight on here. But we'll get crimped down there. Get our other ones. All right, last one. Now, when I get my other line over here this one's a little bit long so we'll chop a little off of course that did a crappy job let me get my good pliers 
There we go. Let's just give them a little, I always give them a little tug, make sure they're not loose and that I did a good job. Sometimes they look good, but you screw it up, at least my experience. So we'll get these guys hooked up. So our line one's going to be red. And I'm just following the co color code of the unit itself. That way everything matches up. Then our black leg. And then our ground. tight there. Let me see if I can loosen it up. All right. There we go. All right. Nice little tug. They're all good to go. Now, for the other cable, for the cable that goes inside I'm going to use what's called a cable gland and it this is not really the perfect size for this uh, cable but we'll see how tight we can get it but basically what it does is when you tighten this nut down it squeezes a piece of rubber in here and it makes a watertight seal around your cable so we'll see this is the right size for the hole in the unit. This is a half inch. Um, but we'll see once we get the cable in here how well it does. All right, so went out, picked up a flaring tool, and I got my little a new pipe cutter. The one I had, uh, I left it wet, got all rusty. So, we're going to go ahead and trim these back a little bit. And I'm going to leave a little bit of extra in case I want to move it around a little bit more. So, I'm going to cut them off um, just a little bit past here. Because I think I'm going to run them under the unit and then come up and then down to where I can get a nice angle when I hook them up. So, I'm going to cut them a little bit long on purpose. So first, I'm just going to split this pipe open a little bit, this covering. There we go. Expose some of the copper. I'm going to split this down the middle too so I can get them apart from each other a little bit. That way I can get my tool in here. So I'm just going to put it in here, tighten it down to where it just starts kind of making contact. Then as we spin it a little bit, <clears throat> kind of tighten it down some more. Whoop. 
keep tight it the wrong way. <sighs> First one down. Get the next one in there. <clears throat> Same thing. Put it in between between the two ball ball bearings. Tighten it down to where it starts making a little bit of pressure. Spin it around. Tighten it. Spin it around. Tighten it. Didn't quite make it through clean on that one, so we'll just we'll just bend it a little bit. It just left a little bit on there. So I'm gonna pull these apart a little bit, give myself some room to work. So the first things first, you got to put your your nut on there. All right, and this this unit it pulls apart like so, and then you put this on there to the right size pipe so let's see what the right size is for this guy I think this must be let's see if I got my tape out here I think these are half inch pipes Let's take a measurement real quick. Now nah, this is a uh, this is five eighths pipe, so that will be the second one on my on my list on my thing here. So when you put this on here. You want the pipe to stick out just a little bit. On the instructions, they say um, a millimeter beyond. So just a nub past flush. <clears throat> and then you slide this unit on. Well, first things first, make sure you're all the way extracted. Uh, this bolt and this one on this side of the unit there's a divot for this handle to go into so you know you're lined up right so we'll get that on there it's pretty tight so i might need to clamp that down with a pair of pliers or something all right so I need to get this thing to close all the way so I can just grab some channel locks to tighten it down so I can actually there you go get this thing all the way on there all right so get it lined up about in the middle and you can kind of feel where the night when this bottom nut goes in so just tighten her up then you tighten this down we'll go ahead and make this real tight there we go So 
So these are eccentric and they kind of spin oblong like this as you go. So it makes that flare with. You can see it going around there in the crack here. All right. So kind of made a little click sound, and I think it's good. So we're just backing it off so we can get it back out. Take this guy back loose. Take it off. Ah. It's kind of tied around there, so let's see if I can pop it loose. There we go. All right. So let's see what our flare looks like compared to the... So here's the flare that I cut off. Here's my flare. Looks pretty good. Let's see if the nut fits over it. Yep. So the nut fits over it okay. It's pretty smooth inside. Had a little burr there on the outside edge. But pretty good. All right, let's do the next one. It's a pretty good looking flare though. All right, let's try this again. So it's kind of quick and easy, really. Not really too too much to it. Yeah, there we go. Pretty good. I'll give you guys a link in the description on one of these tools. This one I particularly bought in Home Depot, but I don't have any affiliate Home Depot links, so I have to give you uh, something on Amazon. I, I did see these on Amazon. I do the same exact design and probably the same tool made at the same place. All right, so there we go. We got a flare on there. Looks pretty good. No real sharp edges. Here's the factory one, here's mine. Looks pretty good. All right. This one's a little on the tight side. There we go. But perfect. All right, so let's get these lines run. First, I'm gonna take these caps off. We got some caps on here. They were tight and I loosened them up earlier. Getting pretty close. And I want to go ahead and tape up my line set here first. I'm going to pull them out and tape them off real quick. 
we'll be right back after that after I tape these up all right everybody I got the pipes kind of bent to where they line up and so now we're going to connect them up um, I will say be careful when you're bending these pipes and taking it slow if you're doing it by hand because I did kind of indent it a little bit so I think it'll still be okay it just kind of flattened it a hair um, I felt it when it started to go so I stopped um, but I got them lined up and now we'll get them connected. We're going to start off with the smaller line. Um, get my wrench set. All right. All right, so I got that nylon, nylog blue that I was talking about. It's kind of some sticky stuff, but just put a drop there, a little bit on the end. You don't need to put it on the threads or anything. And then just take your finger and whirl it around. Like I said, it's kind of some sticky stuff. I'll get that on there. Kind of finger tighten it at first. There is a torque setting in the book, but I don't have the type of torque wrench I would need to do that so I'm just going to get it tight and cinch it a little bit I don't want to pull super tight on it because you can break these um, so that's that one we'll get a little bit on this bigger one there's still a little bit on my end here all right this one's a little harder to get lined up <clears throat> but we got it <laughs> Since this one's not perfectly straight, I'm gonna have to bring it in with the with the flange bolt. I think I got it. No, nope, I don't have it started. Let me try to get it. shake it a little bit while I'm tightening it see if I can get it to catch a thread or two I think I got a thread caught that looks better I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna hold this. See if I can hold this a little bit. To get a little better cinch on it. All right, seems good. Double check this bottom one. Yep. Feels good. 
All right, so let's get our line here, control wire fed. All right, just gonna get this line ran over here. This is the control wires from the inside unit. Got my flan or my connector on there. I don't think I like that. I don't like like it touching the copper there, so let me run it back the way I had it. Now when I taped up my line set, um, I ran out of tape. I think partially is because I was running I think I was running the uh, overlap too far so I think you can just barely overlap it or you won't have enough because I surely didn't come close to having enough to wrap up the whole line set and I cut half the lines off um, but I did double uh, do it went over it twice let's chop this guy off we'll peel back I'm just trying to make them about the same length as the other wires here and then we'll tighten up this nut right here to give some strain relief and it's getting tight on it so half inch works pretty good nice and tight all right so we'll peel some of this guy back Try not to cut your wires inside. There we go. I got it started a little bit. I'm just scoring the outside with that razor blade. I'm not going in very deep. I've got it most of the way through. <clears throat> One little bit's holding on. There we go. All right. We'll get the plastic off. put on our we use I think we're gonna use blue this time should fit yeah so blue spade terminals on this guy and we'll just we'll peel off about just short of a half of a half inch Got like a little plastic coating on the outside, a clear plastic coating on this wire. So the first pull is pulling off that plastic coating first. I 
All right, perfect. Those should all be good. So we'll get them started here. Now I just do it to where the copper pokes out the end just a little bit. this upside down actually got it right side up I'm just in the wrong hole yeah not my best crimp ever Let's see if I can fix it a little bit there we go all right, tug on it, make sure it's good. Get the next one going. Just trying to get my plier right. There we go. Okay. Get my green. All right, we'll check them one more time, make sure they're not loose. All right, they all look good. So let's back off these screws in here a little bit. We'll start out with our ground. Probably put a little bend on it. We're gonna put this ground on this ground bolt here. This is the system ground. All right. Then uh, we're following the colors above. So first ones are red. Make sure you get it under the terminal pad. So we're good there. Next one is black. And the last one is white. right double check in make sure that they don't come loose everything looks good now if we wanted we could try to use that uh, strain relief but I got strain relief in both of these so I'm not too worried about it so okay let me find my screws. I'll put this, clean this guy up. All right, there's one. Here's the other one. Now, I'll probably take this control wire here a little later. I might not show you. I'm probably just gonna wire tie it over to this one just to keep it out of the way of this over here. Uh, but next up, we need to get out our vacuum pump. We're ready to test our lines. So I'll get my vacuum pump out 
get it all set up and come back and show you guys how it's done. We're ready to get started on vacuuming the system. So I picked this kit up uh, online and I'll put a link down in the description. But basically what it comes with is a vacuum pump and then the line set and a couple adapters. So it's everything that you need in order to pull a vacuum on a system. Um, since this is not one of the DIY uh, kits that have pre-charged line sets, we'll have to pull a vacuum, make sure everything doesn't leak, and then once the, uh, we're sure it's good, then we'll release the charge that's inside the unit. So when you get your vacuum set, it'll come with a bottle of oil, and you put it in here and fill it between the min and the max lines. Okay, before we actually do this, you need to pull this cap off. It's an exhaust. So we have our yellow line hooked up to the, the vacuum pump. And then that's going into the middle of our line set. And then I have the red, which is the high pressure side, just ran into itself and turned off. I have the blue on open. And, in, and that will be connecting to our top side here, the bigger pipe. So I'll take off this cap. Make sure that we put it somewhere where it's not going to get dirt inside of it. And then this kit comes with two of these little adapters. Um, we need to use this one here. So we'll put the adapter here on the, on the line. And I suggest you tighten all these with some pliers. I used channel locks earlier, but this is what I have handy here. If you don't use some pliers on them, you're probably not going to get a good vacuum. So then we'll hook our blue line to this. Once again, we'll snug them with our pliers here. Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so that's nice and tight. All right. Let's give this a shot. So we'll turn this on. Well, we would but I think I still have my plugs turned off from when I was working on it yesterday. So let me turn on my breaker first. All right, let's give this a try again. So I pulled that box off the wall yesterday, so I turned the breaker off, so safety got me again. All right, so we'll turn this on. It's starting to run. It's blowing a little smoke out the top kind of cool let's uh probably take a few minutes but we should be able to see our blue gauge is down to minus 30 it's actually it was pretty quick let's see if So, I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. So let's make sure we start our timer for 15 minutes. All right, and then we'll come back and check it here in a little bit. So, okay, it's been 15 minutes and we're holding there at minus 30. I did have to restart. I had a little bit of leakage over here from uh, this connector. So I had to put some thread tape on there uh, because it was leaking right there. So I think we're good now. We'll see what happens. Make sure our pressure stays up. So the next stage is just turning off the pump. 
and watching our needle here to make sure that it stays uh, holding the vacuum. So if everything's airtight, uh, we'll wait 15 more minutes, come back out, check the needle. If it's good, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're back. Uh, it's been 15 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer. And you can see here that we're holding steady. So that's a good sign. Now, I'm just going to follow some of the other people's uh, instruction I've seen as far as releasing the gas. I read the manual and it stated basically leave your line set hooked up and to uh, release the gas to make sure you got some pressure in there but I think I'm going to skip that just to make sure I don't lose any and disconnect this set. Now one note I wanted to mention to you because I found it to be a problem is I had these side units hooked up and I had this one open and it was causing me vacuum loss so I closed it and it solved my issues so holding steady that means our lines are uh, airtight and are not leaking so we'll go ahead and move forward all right so first things first i'm going to go ahead and remove the adapter for the service port i got it super tight because this thing was leaking on me i put thread locker on it or thread tape on it twice to keep it from leaking and as you can see it's pretty dang tight now let's go ahead and pull this guy off first make it a little bit easier I've chewed this thing up trying to get it out get it on there and tight there we go. All right, that's loose enough to get it by hand now, I think. Yep, just take that guy off. We'll go ahead and get our cap back on. I'm gonna leave that thread locker on there, it won't hurt anything. Well, maybe it'll give me a hard time trying to get this cap back on. Let me go ahead and see if I can peel some of it off. All right. Now, I don't know if it was my adapter that I had or, you know, this thing, but it sure was giving me a fit earlier, so... We'll get that guy on there. Tighten it back up. <clears throat> All right, so the instructions on this one said release the high pressure first and do it slowly um, and that's what we're going to do all right that's nice and tight we'll remove these caps bit the big one there all right we got our caps out get our allen wrench and it's a five millimeter and we're gonna release it and there's a slow release of gas i hear you don't want to do it all at once kind of want to do it slowly Right. 
tank. It's got some gas running in there. That's the high pressure is the smaller one. Sounds pretty good. So we're going to do it the rest of the way. And same thing with this top one. It's a little tighter. There we go. You can see the steam coming off the pipes. All right, so we'll back that one all the way out. Caps back on. You can hear the Freon moving around. Actually, I think I got a little bit of a leak. Move my hand around this thing, and I feel feel like I got a leak. Maybe I don't have my pipe real tight. Let me check that and I'll come back to you guys. All right, I just had to snug it just a hair. It was um, just making a little bit of noise. I think it was actually, I don't know if it was leaking or just making noise, but uh, I put some pliers on it and snugged it just a touch more. And I think I'm good now. So I'm surprised I didn't really see that from, from the unit, but we'll move on. So we're all connected up. We're set up. I'm going to put, I'll worry about the cover later. But let's go inside and turn it on and see what happens. See if the magic happens. Okay, we're here at the breaker panel, and this is my 20 amp double throw breaker. I'm going to flip this baby on, see what happens over on the unit. All right, I've got my remote here. Let's see if we can turn the unit on. There we go, it's on. I don't know if you guys can see that display very well. Set at 76. Let's go ahead and turn this down to 70. See what happens. So we got the unit up here. You can hopefully see that it says 70. We got quite a bit of air coming out of it. All right, let's get our temperature gun. Not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but the wall, it's 78.9. It's kind of hot day out. Let's go in here to the try to get it into the airflow and yeah, nothing yet let's give it a minute I'm not even showing you anything let's see It's going down a little bit. 
68, 67, yeah, so the air is getting cold. I'm bringing the garage down. Now I got the big garage door open, but you can see it's blowing out cold air, so I think we have success. Now, one thing that I'm missing on this guy that I couldn't find is the drain plug. There's a drain plug that goes under the bottom of the unit and I have looked and searched all the boxes, my garage, and I can't find it. So I don't know if it came with it. Um, there's a note in the instructions that uh, say that it's only included in certain models. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have one or I just didn't get it in the package. So once I clean up, uh, hopefully I'll either find it or not, but I'll contact the manufacturer and make sure because it's a, it's a little L-shaped uh, piece and it goes under uh, the outside unit and it drains on the ground. So hopefully it would be fine without it because I cannot find the thing. But we'll check it out. We'll let this thing run for a little while and see what it's like here in the, in the building, here in the workshop. Um, one more thing I've got is this unit comes with Wi-Fi and so I got this little Wi-Fi dongle and it goes up inside this door. I don't know if you let's see if we can get to it but it goes right here in this door. plug it in like so all right and then you scan that the QR code on your phone download the app and follow the instructions I'm not going to go to it in this video but that's that's it all right and as you can see we've got it set to 70 we'll close the barn door come out here in a little bit make sure everything's all right Yeah, well, close the barn door, come out here in a little bit, and see if it feels nice and cold. All right, guys, we're back out here at the unit. I just wanted to kind of see what it sounded like, and it is pretty quiet. Um, can't hardly hear a thing, and I'm right next to it. So pretty awesome, sounds good. Um, doesn't rattle, doesn't shake, looks pretty awesome. So let's go inside the barn and see what it's doing. All right, feels fairly comfortable in there. Here's our unit, set at 60 sticks, still blowing a lot of cold air. Let's get our temperature sensor out, Let's see what it's doing. All right. So, hopefully you can read that, it's, 47 degrees blowing cold air nice and cold now earlier we were measuring just right on the wall and it was 79 degrees now we're at 71.4 so I just been away for about 15 minutes or so and I can definitely feel the difference in the barn so I think we got success. I got a few items to tidy up, um, like covering up that mess over there and putting a couple little covers on, but overall, the thing's done. I got hook, hook up Wi-Fi. 
but overall it's been a success okay everybody so we're all done out here with the mini split it seems to be working really good time will always tell but thanks for watching if you want to see what's next like and subscribe below and if you want to pick up any of the items that I've talked about in this video they're down in the description so don't forget to watch the other videos and I'll see you next time